John, I got to thank you twice because one, I'm glad you're here, and two, uh -huh. I did not realize when we scheduled this uh, this event a year ago that we come up against the Duke Carolina game. Yeah, you really don't want to go there because uh, I've been following the game uh, and uh, the wrong team won. Oh, all right. So However, there is good news. It was 74 to 73. We'll see a very good rating tomorrow morning. We'll see a lot of people uh, who received alerts today. We'll see an awful lot of game cast usage and highlights. Uh, so it's good for our business, and that will be my solace. That is it, that you put a nice positive spin on it. Good job. Um, so you have one of the most interesting jobs in TV. I think mm -hmm. this job got a lot harder for you in mm -hmm. the last year or so. Um, I don't really need to go through the whole preamble, but to put it this way, I listened to the Disney earnings call mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. They spent most of the call talking about your business, mm -hmm. talking about what kind of drag it was on Disney. Mm -hmm. It's a marked turnaround from a couple years mm -hmm. ago where you had this mm -hmm. giant growth engine mm -hmm. that was going to go on forever. Mm -hmm. uh, no one ever talked mm -hmm. about was there a problem mm -hmm. with ESPN? Was it given that mm -hmm. ESPN was, was going to grow mm -hmm. forever? Mm -hmm. What happened? E ESPN is not a drag on the Walt Disney Company, and that's not what Bob said. We had the best year in the history of ESPN in 2015 and reported earnings, uh, growth earnings again. Uh, we have some challenges to navigate. Uh, as the president of the company, I am quite confident we will be able to do that. We have a fabulous collection of assets. We operate in a world of sports. You just heard me talking about watching the game before I came up in here. I got a lot of feedback from this crowd about that game. We have the largest aggregation of sports rights in the history of the medium. We hold more sports rights than the other national sports entities combined. And we are going to be able to use those rights to continue to launch new businesses, new platforms, create new content, and continue to grow. Bob said at that earnings call, the Walt Disney Company is a growth company, and ESPN will contribute to that growth. And I'm confident that I will deliver that for him and the company. That's easy. Yeah. That all in one uh, sense. You said, I, you, but you, here's you, you said I had an interesting job. I have a very interesting job. And we have a very good hand to play in navigating the future. So last summer, mm -hmm. Everyone freaked out because Bob mm -hmm. said on the call, you mm -hmm. guys had seen subscriber uh -huh. losses. First time he'd said it mm -hmm. out loud. Mm -hmm. um, he's continued to say it. Mm -hmm. um, Wall Street, many people say, well, this is, this is a real problem. If, mm -hmm. First of all, they couldn't, it was a surprise to them to hear this. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you're considered the strongest cable uh -huh. network. Uh -huh. Why are you losing subscribers? Why have you the, lost subscribers? The, uh, I'm not sure why anybody would be surprised. They were public numbers available through Nielsen for a long time. Let's, let's level set on this. There are in this country, in the neighborhood of 100 million people who get pay television. It is the most widely distributed service in the country after heat and electricity. And ESPN remains in over 90% of those homes. Uh, we are focused on what to do for those homes that we're not in, and we're looking to try to create new packaging with our partners. We announced not long ago and put into the market Sling TV with Dish. We've had a good uptake on that product. That product has brought in new people to the pay television universe. It's overwhelmingly millennial. ESPN is the driver of that package. We expect to, now to discuss with other distributors new packages to bring new people into the market. Uh, and again, we have the Be most- Before we get to the growth and how you're gonna get uh, out of this, I wanna understand why it's shrinking. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people said, well, this, the cable TV is flat. Mm -hmm. They've thought that for a while. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it's going to decline. Mm -hmm. I think people assume that if there was a decline, it might be in the marginal channels. It wouldn't be mm -hmm. ESPN, which is mm -hmm. very popular mm -hmm. content. So why, why did you lose subscribers? Why again, have you been losing them? Again, in the public numbers, from a high of 103 million households, there are now 100 million households. So there's been some losses due to cord cutting. Uh, there have been some trading down from larger packages into lighter packages, and, and those two factors account for the change in our subscription But you guys base. have shrunk faster than the rest of the cable business. The, uh, we have had more losses from the move down to lighter packages because in the manifestation of those packages that have been in the markets the last couple of years, we were not in some of them. So where, 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 where can I pay for pay TV and not pay for ESPN? Uh, it's hard for me to imagine. Uh, Verizon tried something, you guys were mm -hmm. suing them over that. It's hard for me to imagine getting a pay TV package where I can't get ESPN. The, the, uh, I mean, I should be clear about the Verizon. Our contention is that they have launched a packaging paradigm that doesn't conform to our, uh, to our contract. And uh, we have um, 
We have uh, filed litigation. We are good partners with Verizon. We expect to resolve that, uh, that disagreement uh, in the market. Um, and I have no interest in telling you where you can get a package without ESPN. Fair enough. Comcast on its call uh, a couple weeks ago said, we, we, don't, we don't see people moving to skinny packages. We sell them. It's not, not material. We don't see, they're, they've got 25 plus million homes. Mm -hmm. You would think that if, if you guys were seeing people move to these skinny packages, and everyone here I think knows what that is, mm -hmm. um, th they would see it as well. So it seems like there's a, there's a divergence here. For, there's not a divergence. The, we, we're talking with ESPN over a course of a, a several years. Verizon, I'm sorry, uh, Comcast, has seen a diminution of the people taking light packages at Comcast. They, like we, have an interest in selling people the larger package yep. on which they make more money and which has those channels that people won't. Um, so that's sort of what's going on there. So you're seeing it, they're not seeing it, but those two things no, are No, no, no. The, uh, the, we suggested over the course of some amount of time that there were some trading down to light packages in a number of distributors. We didn't. Uh, I didn't cite Comcast as one, of, but there were some trading down in Comcast. Did, did, did the speed at which people dropped your channel surprise you? The, the, the current landscape does not particularly surprise us. We have been planning for a long time, understanding that there are a lot of options in the market for people to get video, new over-the-top services. We regard those, and what we have to act upon is the fact that those also represent opportunities for us. We have to find new distributors who come in. All of our content is delivered over the top, by the way. Uh, when we have this discussion about over the top and direct to consumer, we were the first in the market with authenticated television. And on Watch ESPN, you can watch all of our linear content on any device you want to watch, anywhere you want to as watch. As long as you're paying for pay As TV. long as you're authenticated and paying for pay television. But we are, all of our content is over the top. We had a version of this conversation a few years ago, and you, your plan there to address I think the way you were describing it is, look, pay TV is going to stop growing and we've got to find new ways to grow. What we're going to do is we're going to find new things that we can sell mm -hmm. digitally. You eventually end up selling a cricket package. Mm -hmm. I think you've been talking, we've been talking about selling uh, basketball stuff. But you were clear, you said, what we're going to do is we're going to sell additional stuff on top of the stuff we're selling. We're not going to, we're not going to change the core bundle that we're selling at all. We're going to keep that intact. Is that still the plan or do you, have you had to change that? No, that's still the plan. Look, we by declaration, for the 16th straight year, the distributors have declared that the most valuable content in their package is ESPN. And we derive a commensurate value to that from the distributors, and we have no intention of changing that proposition. That is excellent business for us, and is part of how we've delivered growth to the Walt Disney Company. I'm not going to take the content off of that and deliver it some other way. We're going to keep that content in the pay television so package. So that core package, like, that come, you've got to get ESPN. Right. And on, on top of that, you have right. to get this big bundle of other ESPNs, and uh, ESPN 1 through 8, ESPN mm -hmm. Classic. Um, and then also, Disney would like you to be sold along with ABC, Disney Family, all of its stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that a realistic prospect, given the move to skinny bundles? It, yes, it's a realistic prospect. Again, we continue to have all of that Walt Disney Company product distributed in over 90% of the 100 million homes that get pay television. We believe that for the foreseeable future, that is the predominant way in which people are going to watch television in this country. I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask anyway. Any way that you guys could sell ESPN as a standalone product like HBO does with HBO we Now? We can sell ESPN as a standalone product, but we do not believe it right now to be good business. Again, we're in 90 million homes. HBO has a, a significant delta between the 100 million homes and the 25, give or take, therein. So they have an opportunity to, to go and sell to those people. We don't have that missing number. Now, again, when we launched the Dish Sling TV package, uh, we wanted to reach those people we're not in. We want to make sure that people who have not yet gotten a pay television product have product that includes ESPN that they can enter the market in. But no, we do not have a contemplation right now that we would sell it as a standalone. Let's talk about Sling. Um, launched earlier, mm -hmm. launched about a year ago. 
Um, and at the time, the, the vibe I got from people in your company, people at Disney, the people who were distributing stuff for mm -hmm. them, was there was an interesting experiment. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of talk about it. Mm -hmm. They haven't released numbers, but the best guess is they may be half a million subscribers. In this last call, you guys have been mentioning them a lot. Uh -huh. Is that because you really think they're, they specifically are going to generate a, a whole bunch of new subscribers for you, or is it that you think they're representative of a bunch of other sling type products that are coming out? As we were discussing with them launching such a product, our concern is whether or not we're getting new subscribers or are we getting subscribers trading down from an existing package. The economics are immaterial to us because we get paid the same thing uh, in the Sling package that we get paid in the larger bundle. But what we have learned from meeting with Sling is that the vast majority of those subscribers are incremental. So we are much more bullish now about the ability to push further. Uh, we're comfortable with Sling continuing to sell subscriptions. What, is, what does pushing further mean for you guys? Uh, Sling is marketing that product uh, aggressively, uh, and there's been a, a bigger take up in December, January, uh, February for the Sling product. We are discussing with other distributors putting a similar product in the market. So we have a lot of, I think we look to move aggressively because we think we'll move new people into the universe. So, I call Sling a crippled version of ESPN. I uh, heard from someone that, that works in Bristol, Connecticut, who was upset that I called it that. But it's not. I'm sorry, a, who was upset? Someone who works for you. Oh. Um, wasn't you. Um, but it, it's not the full version of ESPN. It, it doesn't have a DVR function. Mm -hmm. You can't pause the stuff. You uh. can't rewind. It's only one stream. It seemed pretty clear that when you launched that last year, you weren't entirely sure you wanted a product that was 100% competitive with conventional pay TV out there in the web. If you, if you keep working with Sling, it sounds like you are, if you do other versions mm -hmm. of this, are you going to make it closer to sort of the, the actual ESPN? The, the, your, your characterization is consistent with my assertion that we were concerned <laughs> that it would be a trade down product. And we're not right, so you, you, so you we calibrated the services that were delivered there. And you gave we, yourself an out, too. You said if it gets too popular and it cuts the, into our business, we, we can get out. We, we are now in discussions, including with Dish, about creating other multi-stream products uh, which would continue, which would still be different than the package, than the services we deliver in the larger bundle, but which would, which would narrow the differential. What, would the, what, what, what differences do you want to keep in a web TV service versus a uh, linear service? Uh, you know, since we're having discussions uh, which are confidential, I'm not really going to comment on that. Here's another one you're probably not going to comment on, but, but uh, who are these other services? We've, uh, we had Eric Huggers on, uh -huh. uh, who used to, was trying three years ago to do a mm -hmm. version of, of a pay TV mm -hmm. over the web. That didn't work. Since then, the only, Sling is the only one that's actually mm -hmm. entered the market, and we've mm -hmm. heard about Apple. Lots of people mm -hmm. circling this right. for a long time, haven't got in. The, Are they, you saying they're going to show up this year? The, uh, I, I don't ha have a prediction about when they'll show up. There is very significant interest from a bunch of people. I mean, and most of it's public, right? I mean, Amazon has had has been public about discussions they're having for video content. Uh, Apple. I don't has think been Amazon. Public. I don't think Amazon said it out loud, uh -huh. or Apple. But thank you. Uh, you guys can type that up now. <laughs> no. So they, they, they talking to Amazon, talking to Apple. Who else are you talking to? I, I didn't say we were talking to anybody. I said a number of people have expressed interest, and we're in discussions with a large number of people. I can't really make. I, I think other people will enter into some market with lighter packages in this calendar year. But and, and, and your contention is, look, you still we'll sell you this stuff over the web, but it's you've got to take a bundle of our stuff. You've got to work with ABC. It's, it's those. Those conditions still apply. The, 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 the Sling package has ESPN 1, ESPN 2, ABC Family, the Disney Channel. Uh, so we did not sell them the entire package of services. So you're already sort of making those concessions already. I, I don't know if I would refer to them as concessions. We understand <laughs> that we have to create entry packages. And again, you're calibrating which services are in, what it costs, with the expectation that people are going to enter, buy, it's an entry ramp, right? They're going to buy that package and they're going to trade up in the future for more services. So are you accelerating, is this stuff happening faster than you expected? Or, or if I talked to you two years and we were having a, a conversation with liquor maybe, you would have said, this is where we're going to be. Or did this take you by surprise? You referenced before, you and I had a similar session in which I acknowledged that we had reached a plateau with the pay television universe and there was likely to be some slight decline. Yep. And that is what has happened. I do not pretend to have predicted it exactly, but I think we understood generally what was happening. I think any, I, I'm not gonna give any prediction as to what 
rates things are going to happen. We've had, Bob uh, on the earnings call suggested that we've had an uptick in subscriptions recently. We did have in December and January, we had a net incremental ads to our subscription basis, to our subscription base. We're quite heartened by that. Uh, I'm not, not ready to call it a trend or make any prediction, but we see our distributors being more aggressive about trying to have improved customer service, about trying to have better user interfaces for their product and marketing aggressively to bring new people in. That is all good for us. Again, we're the greatest beneficiary of this business model. And as there are any ads or any improvements, uh, that's good for our business. Um, let me ask you specifically about, about Apple. When you are talking to them, not publicly, about this, um, do, do they anticipate that you would be part of a core set of packages? Because they want to sell something for 30 bucks. It's hard to imagine how you fit in that package, or would you be in a separate the, tier? The, the only thing I'm willing to discuss relative to Apple, uh, and ADQ is a friend of mine, is that Apple understands the value of the content of the Walt Disney Company and is the first stop towards trying to create a video offering. I'm not going to characterize uh, what other products might be in it or what the price of it will be, but uh, it is pretty clear, uh, and, and Eddie's a happy guy because Duke won, so I think he would uh, back me up here that he acknowledges the value of our content. One year we will get him on stage to have that conversation as well. At the beginning of this, you said, we have more sports rights than all the other programmers put together. For a very long time, that seemed like this awesome moat that you'd built up. Mm -hmm. There was no way you were going to watch sports on TV uh -huh. unless you had ESPN and you could get some rabbit ears and you could mm -hmm. watch an NFL game. Now the, the tenor of the conversation has changed. There's a lot of folks saying, no, this is, this is now a wait for you guys because these sports rights are expensive. They mm -hmm. get more expensive over time. Your bill keep, for these rights mm -hmm. keeps going up. Your subscriber base, for the moment, is shrinking. How are you going to make up the difference? It, that's, uh, that, that's not the actual world I live in. We are very excited about having those rights. We think those rights are the greatest asset we have, which allows us to navigate any environment. Sports is ascendant in this culture. 95% of everybody who has a television in this country watched sports last year. In September of 2015, 200 million people uh, in, in, uh, watched some ESPN product. That's 82.4% of every adult in the country. Sports is a mass product, and it's a non-replicable product. You can't knock it off. If we have the Rose Bowl, you have to watch it on ESPN. It's a live product, which means you have to watch it when it happens. It is ascendant in the advertising world. In the last six years, our growth rate has been triple that of the overall television industry because people increasingly recognize the value of live. So we are very happy to have those rights. But what's, what's going to fuel the growth? Are you going to charge me the, more? Are you going to charge the distributors more? Are you going to charge advertisers We have more? a long history of programming cost increases and increasing our revenues to absorb those costs. You already heard me say uh, we had the best year in the history of ESPN, our financial, financial performance in 2015, after absorbing our new NFL deal, our Major League Baseball deal, and our college football playoff deal. Uh, and we continue to grow revenue. It's a fairly simple matter. We have to grow revenue faster than these expenses grow, and we're going to continue to do so. When we bought the NBA, we understood what it meant to us, and we have planned for how we're going to continue to grow our revenues to absorb that cost. One last time, how are you going to grow the revenues if the subscriber base is shrinking? The, our affiliate revenue continues to grow because our annual increases are greater than the diminution of the subs. In addition to which, I already said we have ascendant advertising revenues. Let me give you an example on the NBA of how we're going to grow those revenues. Uh, we have over 100 regular season games. On February the 6th, we had the Golden State Warriors against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Good game. Thank you very much. Good game for us. 3.2 million people watched on television. Another 321, 320,000 people watched on Watch ESPN. Uh, authenticated to their pay television subscription. Another 850,000 people watched it on a simulated game cast. Another 450,000 people watched highlights during that game. And another 200,000 people read alerts or content during that game. That gives us a total audience of 5 million. We are in the market now for advertisers to sell impressions across all mediums at the same high above market CPM. And so that allows us 
We, we increased our television audience by 36% with all of that, the rest of those impressions, and we charged for all of that. So we can increase revenues on this content with advertising. Uh, in, in the first quarter, our advertising was up 25%, adjusted exactly for like to like, up 14%. Uh, our digital revenue up greater than 25% in the first quarter. So the answer is all above. You're going to raise is, your rates, you're going to raise your ad rates, people are going to keep watching the stuff. Yes. Um, one, of the, one of the great successes of ESPN was when it, when it started, mm -hmm. you guys didn't have any sports rights. Mm -hmm. You weren't there at the beginning of it, but it had Australian rules, football, mm -hmm. and log rolling. Mm -hmm. and, and what they did is they showed sports highlights, which mm -hmm. you couldn't, it's hard to imagine, but you uh -huh. couldn't get those anywhere else. Mm -hmm. so you could only see it on your local news right. at 1020. Um, now you, I can see mm -hmm. instant highlights on your stuff, but I can mm -hmm. also see instant highlights on Twitter and Facebook, mm -hmm. and there's mm -hmm. SB Nation, the company mm -hmm. I work for runs that. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll show stuff immediately. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a conversation with them about that later if uh -huh. you want. Um, the sports highlight is, no, is a commodity now. I can mm -hmm. get it anywhere. How much, and that's, that's uh -huh. because of the internet. Uh -huh. um, how much of that has, has, has made life more challenging for you, the fact I, that it's no longer a precious resource? Uh, we, uh, we've always faced competition we deliver more highlights. The consumption of highlights on ESPN is greater than everybody else's combined. 56% of all news and information consumed in sports is consumed on ESPN platforms. So, and we have successfully transitioned from a cable television company, which was a disruptor of the broadcasting sports business, to a digital company in the 90s, which used that disruption not to worry about our other business or abandon our other business, but to build on top of that business. And we added mobile in the 2000s. Again, we didn't worry about disruption. We yep. didn't resist new technology. We adopted it and grew our business. And sports is different because we hold these rights that we can move across all these platforms. People can't take these new platforms and beat us at the things we hold rights to. We have more highlights. We have a uh, proprietary technology called Fast Clipper, and I will urge you to watch a game on ESPN while you have your phone with you, and you will see sometimes the highlights will show up before they actually happen in the live game. But I bet you that if I was watching, if I was had, if I had, uh, if I was during that game, the the Golden State uh -huh. game. That if, if, if I wanted to, I could have turned on Twitter and either seen via a Twitter you, highlight or a Vine owned by Twitter. Because NBA loves Vine. All sorts of highlights. You filmed, would not probably, have, probably, probably taken from your broadcast but and slapped you, up there. You would, not, you would get hours first. Hours are better. And people want to consume their sports on ESPN. Brands matter. And ESPN is by far the most popular sports brand. People trust ESPN. They know they're getting the highest quality highlights. We continue to drive a very good business with highlights. I don't believe that people will abandon ESPN to watch highlights other place. And look, where there is interest in sports on any of these platforms, we are the greatest beneficiary of that because we have the most rights, we have the most usage, we're the only fully integrated multi-platform entity in all of media, but certainly in sports. We have competitors across all aspects of our business, but nobody looks like we do. Nobody has radio and television and magazine and mobile and internet, and we have a leading share in every one of those. And those all tend to promote the other. We can sell advertising impressions across all those platforms, and we don't have any issue competing. Do you ever consider Maybe we shouldn't be working quite so closely with Twitter. Maybe we should make our stuff a little harder to no, find again, on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. No, again, we, we look upon everything new, innovation, including social media, as an opportunity for us to grow our business. We did the first advertising deal with Twitter back, I think, in 2010 or 11 on the NBA Finals. We had the first live video player in Facebook's timeline. We have, we have, you're talking about news and information, we have 25 million Twitter followers uh, for SportsCenter and a same, similar number for the ESPN Twitter handle. We adopt all those technologies and use them to reach our fans under ESPN branded content. We have, we have a deal with Snapchat Discover. That's uh, the, under the ESPN brand is where sports information comes in there. And most of those companies understand 
That is, they want to drive content. They want to drive it with the ESPN brand. How's, the, how's Snapchat working for you guys? Do you, do you have numbers that are, are meaningful for you? I, I, I don't, I'm not conversant with the numbers. I apologize. I hear the, the guys who did the deal tell me it's great. They're and, happy about it. Uh, and, and I've talked to the Snapchat guys. I've talked to, to uh, Emre, and, and uh, they're happy with the deal. So, uh, but I, I'm not conversant enough with the numbers, so I can't really tell you. Uh, again, I'm thinking of a conversation we had where someone asked you about eSports. Uh -huh. And you looked at them like they had a tinfoil hat on uh -huh. and probably had the same reaction. Now you guys are in the esports business. Is that, why are you in the esports business? Uh, it, it just means I'm a lifelong learner, right? And it was uh, one of the things that, that you have to always work towards is making sure that you have people who work for you who are more connected to different things. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a 60 year old man. I wasn't particularly connected to esports. I had smart people who told me there's something to this. We should look at it, get involved, we should cover it. Uh, and, and I did so. Did you guys have a chance to, to buy Twitch, the thing that Amazon ended up buying? Uh, we did, I, I'm, I'm not aware. We did not look it's at not it and, and uh, we did not pursue and is that So you're covering it now. Do you imagine that I'm one day going to turn on ESPN and I'm, there'll be eSports on we, we had Look, we've had some discussions with a number of players in the eSports area about ways in which we could participate uh, more fully. None of, none of that has come to fruition yet, but I think we'll continue to pursue opportunities for us. Look, it's consistent with the discussion you've, I've, you and I have been having is, of course, with everything going on, we have to be smart about finding new opportunities, new revenue streams, growing different things, and we're aggressively doing that. How do you, how do you, how do you help yourself? You, we both are not eSports fans, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to confess that I'm not an eSports mm -hmm. fan. I don't think you are either. But it turns out you need to be in the eSports business. Um, you didn't know that a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Now you do. Do you think about sort of how you figure, how you can sort of get your employees, your, your team to sort of help you say, John, this is something you got to pay attention to two years ago or three years yeah. ago? Look, that's what happened. I mean, I, I have a very bright guy who works for me named John Kozner, and John said, you need to pay attention to this. He took me to Madison Square Garden to see the League of Legends final, uh, and I spent some time there with the guys who uh, uh, run Riot Games and, and had a great time. It was great fun and interesting to me. I saw the crowd that was there and learned that that sport mattered to those people. Those are young, uh, predominantly male consumers and uh, that's what matters to us. And so we entered the business, the coverage of it, and we've carried some games and we continue to have discussions to to uh, do other things. Does pro wrestling fall in that category? You guys are doing more WWE coverage than I No, we, 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 uh, we don't cover pro wrestling as a sport. We've actually, most of our interaction with WWE has been around uh, charitable activities. Uh, uh, we've done a lot of Make-A-Wish with them. They were sponsors with us of the Special Olympics and uh, become friends with Stephanie uh, and we've done a lot of uh, good things together. Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon. But we don't, w uh, we, we have not been interested in carrying it as programming. Uh, here's one that I think will be hard for you to engage in, but I'll ask. Uh, NFL, you guys have bet big on, uh, on the NFL, bet big on football, college football mm -hmm. broadly. Again, there's a growing discussion that says there's a good chance that one day the NFL becomes like boxing. It's a niche sport. Mm -hmm. It's hard to imagine mm -hmm. now, but boxing used to be a really big deal enjoyed by everyone. Mm -hmm. It's hard to imagine that football becoming a niche sport. Can you imagine that happening in five, 10, 15 years? No, I really can't. I mean, um, it, the popularity of the sport continues to grow. Uh, we, uh, our, our ratings and usage across all of our platforms for NFL is good. I, it's hard, I, I can't imagine it. Are you a fan? Are you a uh, I'm a fan of football. Yeah, and, and do, you have, do you have any squeamishness or? or, or? Um, look, like everybody at the league, we, we, we covered his news, and we certainly have concerns about the health of the players. We cover that, again, we, we cover that on our news cycles. Because I find it to be a genuine conflict when I'm watching, because I love watching the game, and then I'll read a, sport about a, read a story about a 34-year-old mm -hmm. former Stealer who can't walk down the stairs uh, and, and can't remember something either. So it's, it's hard for me to reconcile, but I'm still watching it. That, that is difficult to see. Okay. We'll leave it there. Um, we could go on for about an hour, but I don't have a limited amount of time. Um, we've been talking about a lot of big picture stuff, uh -huh. smaller picture stuff. Uh, you guys worked with Bill Simmons for a long time. Last spring, mm -hmm. you said we're done working with Bill Simmons. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? The, um, 
You know, the, uh, the Bill Simmons uh, territory may be the most plowed territory on the face of the earth, and I have very little interest in going down the furrow one more time. By the way, that, that's how you do not answer a question on stage. That's, that's <laughs> an acceptable no answer. Um, I really wanted to ask again, but now I can't after I've just praised you for, for that. Um, what about the other niche sites you're doing, like 538? You've got a new one coming out. Why, why do you want to invest time and energy in things that are not really big mass websites? The, look, we have specific reasons for doing smaller niche sites. I am very excited about the undefeated. Uh, and despite a misstep or two, I am fully committed. I think there's nothing more important in our culture right now than race relations. I think there is a very uh, fertile territory. Tell people what Undefeated is in case they're not uh, The Undefeated is a, a new site we're launching uh, uh, sometime this calendar year that is about the intersection of race, culture, and sports. And again, our intention here is to do smart, uh, investigative enterprise, smart uh, features that celebrate uh, the, the world of sports. I think there is not enough black media in this country. There's not enough black owned media. There are not enough sites run uh, by people of color. And we are going to have a site run by people of color, by black Americans who are going to manage, they're going to curate the site. They're going to create the content for that site. Uh, I've had a couple people tell me it's great to be in the majority at my workplace. It provides a different kind of perspective. Uh, and I'm very excited about that. We at ESPN are dramatically committed to diversity. In the Richard Lapchick sport, uh, uh, survey of diversity and culture. He identifies that there are 47 national writers of color uh, in this country and 42 of them, 49, 42 of them work at ESPN. Is that important to you ideologically? Is that important for a business reason? It, it's important to me for all those reasons. It's social, it's cultural, it's ideological, and it's business. We uh, African Americans are a very important part of our constituency. They watch a lot of sports. Uh, and I believe that we have to be their home. I believe that we, they have to believe that we uh, represent their interests, that we are an empl employer of choice, and we do those things. If I can finish my spiel, which I'm committed to doing, yeah, there are also 36 women, uh, and we employ 32 of those. So there are 75 women or, writers of, or, or sports writers of color. We employ uh, almost all of them. Uh, by the way, shame on the rest of the... Of the a staggeringly of the, low number, right? Of, of the press media, yeah. Um, all right, I'm not going to stick my foot in that. Um, but so you've got the undefeated, you've got 538. Do you want to do more of these sites, or are you done? I, I, we don't have any plans right now to do another site. Look, we do these for specific reasons. We're very proud of those sites. 538 just had its best month ever, 7.6 million uniques. We get, we wanted to be leaders in analytics, so we want Nate to help us do that. So we have reasons for brand, for specific audiences we want to reach. It, it's not about driving our business. I've talked about the advertising, the digital, looking for new opportunities. These are not drivers of the business directly. Uh, we spent a bunch of time talking about your growth. What? It, what it, is there any, is there a new product you're coming out with in the next year separate from the skinny bundle packages with Apple or Amazon or other people you haven't said out loud on stage um, that you think will be material for you guys? Um, no, I, I think the things we've talked about are the things that can make a difference for us this year. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm sorry about your team, but I appreciate you coming on stage. Can we, can we hear from the audience, please? I, we've got a big crowd here. I'm asking everyone to stand up and identify themselves as they ask a question. Your name is Rich Greenfield. I see your t-shirt. You don't need to identify yourself. Thanks for taking the question. And John, thanks for making the trip. Um, you know, I just wanted to follow up on Peter's question on direct-to-consumer, because I think that's probably one of the questions that's on everyone's mind sitting here. How does ESPN decide when is the right time to go direct? Like, what are the key decision factors you're looking at as you think about timing. And just related to that, you know, in the MVPD world, th there's no transparency on price. So nobody really knows what ESPN costs them. In the direct-to-consumer world, there's total transparency. And I'm just wondering how that total transparency on you're paying for exactly what you're paying for, how does that alter or affect the ability to transition from the cable bundle to direct-to-consumer? The um of, of course, a difficult, the first part of the question difficult to answer exactly. 
we obviously, but directionally, of course, we will look at direct-to-consumer and our overall business and decide to be more aggressive in direct-to-consumer. We think it will help us grow our overall business. You heard me say that right now our contemplation is with the number of people who still have pay television, with the amount of remuneration we get from that, our best business right now is to stay in that bundle. I think generally people have a sense of the value of ESPN there. Uh, it is certainly accurate that if we go direct to consumer, we'll be charging people a certain amount of money. I do think that they, as people think about this, they oversimplify the binary nature of it. And we hear people talking about, well, gee, if you're doing this here and you have to do this here, how do you replicate this? That's not what be, going to be what's going to happen. What's going to happen is some amount of this is going to happen. We're going to be doing different packages, and we'll do some amount of direct-to-consumer. For the foreseeable future, we'll be looking for different incremental content to sell direct-to-consumers. Are, you, you. are you set up, and is the Internet set up for you guys to do a version of what you do on TV at scale on the Internet? The, uh, that would be very difficult. Uh, to replicate right now with the amount of usage we get. Again, we at ESPN, we can deliver more content direct to consumer uh, than almost anybody and do it at scale. We get hundreds of thousands, millions of people who watch games on, on smartphones and tablets. So we can deliver a lot of content. Uh, to deliver uh, the college football playoff uh, with 25 million people watching, uh, would be very difficult for. And that's on your end. That's on the pipes. That's everything. that's on the that's on, that's everything. That's on the pipes. We can deliver it. I do not. I th I think it would be difficult. It would it would clog up the entire system. We'll ask Bob Bowman from MLB the same. Hey, question Bob tomorrow. Bob would be quite knowledgeable on where there is. They I, I think again I think that uh, Bob and Bam and ESPN probably deliver more content uh, over the, over the top than anybody else. Yep. So, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm I'm talking about the. Traditional media business. Obviously, we don't deliver as much content as Netflix. Yep. Question here. Uh, hey, John. Jack Rotherham, Freewheel. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Uh, two questions. One quick one. Is there some at some point? Could you dial down the esports business between the years 2017 and 19, so my 11-year-old son can get into a good college at some point? I, ca I cannot. I cannot guarantee such an action. All right, on a, on a more serious note, globally, the European uh, sports business, Discovery, Eurosport, the Olympics coming up, can you share some color on where you see the global ecosystem relative from ESPN? Look, we, uh, uh, when I got this job um, in 2012, I made the decision that we did not have significant growth prospects in Europe and Asia, and we sold the networks we've been operating in Europe and Asia for many years. I thought that we had significant opportunity in Latin America. It's another growth area I hadn't mentioned. We are the largest pan-regional pay t television operator, sports operator in Latin America. We have significant businesses in Colombia, Argentina, Brazil, and Mexico. I believe they will continue to grow at significant rates. The, um, uh, in, we've recently done a deal with Sony in India, a deal with Tencent in, um, in China. We've had a deal with BT in, in uh, England. I think around that part of the world, what we'll do is we'll be a licensor of content of our brand. We will launch co-ventures. We will be a digital, a, media, uh, a mobile player. We have ESPN FC. We have ESPN uh, Crick Info, ESPN Crick Info. So we do think there's business to be had there, but it's not in the business of starting networks, buying rights uh, in, those, in those areas. Thank you. Thank you. Hello there. This is feeling like a 60 Minutes uh, episode here. <laughs> Um, good John, one. loving everything, loving ESPN and go dubs. So good year for us. Um, it's becoming more and more expensive for all these different cable packages. And like with ESPN and those who are sports lovers and lower income, it's becoming harder and harder for them to have access to things that they truly love that were actually free to everybody. Mm -hmm. What are your comments on that? The uh, Again, you heard me reference that we are working with distributors to try to create lighter packages which include ESPN. It's clear to us that there are lots and lots of people who want ESPN and it, it's our task to try to figure out how to get packages to them that, uh, that uh, work for them. But she's not talking about just ESPN, right? If I want to watch the, the Final it's Four all, Championship, it's all over. You know, it used I've got to be a cable. Free. 
And across now, it's, very, it's now getting specialized to the different cable ch channels, and it's very difficult for those who are lower income and um, love sports, and it's part of their you know, family, familia, so forth. And you know, they have to go to the bars now to go see it. Um, that, uh, I'm not against that, um, because <laughs> in all those locations, ESPN is on. Uh, look, the cable package continues to be the greatest value in the history of entertainment, and the average hour watched on cable television costs between 15 and 25 cents. Mm -hmm. For most people uh, who cannot afford other kinds of entertainment, it is their entertainment. Yeah. Uh, it, it is dramatically cheap compared to what it costs to go see a movie, to see a Broadway play, to see a concert, or to see... Um... Yep. You've heard this question before. Yeah, just, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next play. Hi, I'm Jason Rapp from Science Inc. I'm a uh, Duke grad, so I can add by one, but I, I, uh, I did have a math question. So Yahoo just paid $17 million for one NFL game, and I was wondering, based on your comment about 5 million viewers for a basketball game, uh, how much would you have spent for a single NFL game if you were them? You know, how did they do, and how would you do the math on, uh, on how they got to 17 million? I, I do not know. I mean, I can't really speak to what their valuation was or what they felt. I think that mostly what the NFL and Yahoo were engaged in was experimentation. I think they were both trying to sort of understand some things. I think they both appear to be quite satisfied with what they learned. Uh, we have a very different contemplation for how we evaluate what games and rights are worth to us. We don't buy games. We buy very large packages of content, data, rights to highlight, studio shows, um, lots of games, but games that we can put anywhere. So you heard me talk about that game. We have the ability to use content from sports leagues in ways that nobody else has and to monetize them in a way that nobody else can. So we don't really look at it on a cost per game basis. We look upon it on a totality of the large package we buy. So when you saw a game like that, you didn't say, well, I, you know, I've got more distribution. I, I could, you know, I should be in that bidding or, uh, or do you ever expect to do an, I don't know why you would, but an online only, uh, a stream of a specific game. It, we, we, we would not necessarily contemplate that, certainly not for NFL product. I mean, look, our goal is to put it on as many devices and as many platforms as possible and allow people to see the game wherever they want to see it and on whatever device. We are not particularly interested in, in bifurcating the platform on which you watch something. Our practice has been since 2005, so for 11 years, that when we do rights deals, we buy content, we buy the right to use that content on all of our platforms. Thanks. Question here. Hi, John. Uh, Ryan Nakashima with Associated Press. Um, I was wondering specifically on the, on the, on the issue of, of you know, whether to go standalone with, with ESPN, is the, you know, is the issue that to the price of a standalone ESPN uh, service to a single consumer would be too high to replace the money you're getting in the bundle? Like, there's estimates it would have to cost 20 or $25 or something like that. I mean, is that a real issue that you've thought about? Look, that, that's just... That's just a hypothetical and ultimately specious mathematical problem, which is, you know, what, what would I have to do? That's not what we're going to do. We don't sell it alone right now because we generate more revenue by being in the larger package, being ubiquitous across the households in this country in which we can sell advertising. That, that simply works better for us. And that is the job we have as a division of a public company, is to generate the most value for shareholders. So that is the calculation we make, uh, is how can we generate the most revenue, uh, most operating income. So that, that is why we do that. We're going to leave it there. I guess you can't reiterate this enough, but you're not selling ESPN.com direct to consumers tomorrow. I don't have to worry about getting a scoop tonight. Good question. Okay. No, we're not. Look, we, no, thank you, Peter. Thank you, John.